These movie scenes had to be altered or even axed completely just to allow their films to make it by the censors. And while we can't show you all of these clips, we can certainly tell you all about them. 2016's Zootopia set a new March record for animated movies when it opened to a $75 million haul, Walt Disney Animation's biggest opening ever at the time. The film wound up scoring an incredible 98% on Rotten Tomatoes, where critics lauded it for its sumptuous animation and inclusive message. However, Zootopia's message was delivered in a far blunter fashion when it was first conceived. The film we saw in cinemas was a thoughtful commentary on racial profiling, with Zootopia's minority predator population discriminated against by the fearful prey despite their efforts to live harmoniously. The original script, in which cynical fox Nick was the protagonist, not idealistic bunny cop Judy, contained something called taming parties in which predatory animals were fitted with collars that shocked them whenever they had a carnivorous thought. Co-director Byron Howard explained during his Blu-ray commentary, It stuck around a very, very long time because we found it emotionally compelling. Compelling it may have been, but upon reflection, Disney decided the shock collars struck the wrong chord. 2016's Deadpool definitively proved once and for all that there's a market for R-rated superhero films. Described as gleefully profane by Rotten Tomatoes, the Ryan Reynolds-led flick made over $780 million at the worldwide box office, with audiences going nuts for its no-holds-barred take on the genre. There were some lines that they wouldn't cross, however, as Tim Miller revealed at an early screening. In particular, there was a bar scene that was too vulgar for even the R-rated Deadpool. T.J. Miller and Ryan Reynolds got together and wrote a version of the scene that we just said, oh my god, this is too far. I mean, there were so many people offended, it was just mean, and so I said, no, we don't have to do that. T.J. Miller, who plays Deadpool's best friend, Weasel, was also present at the event and said the scene, quote, just got more and more hateful the longer it went. Paul Verhoeven made two cuts to his sci-fi classic Robocop to bring it down to an R. The offending scenes involved leading man Peter Weller and Kevin Page, who played the young executive that gets shot to ribbons during a botched demonstration of the ED-209 police robot. Page told The Hollywood Reporter, He finally got the R in the last round of submitting to the ratings board by cutting four seconds. Two seconds of me being shot on the table and two seconds of the back of Peter Weller's head coming off. Weller, who starred as Alex Murphy, the policeman who becomes Robocop, had the more memorable of the scenes in question. His hand and arm are blown off by shotgun blast before he takes a bullet to the forehead. An elaborate model of Weller was created for the sequence, which originally showed the exit wound in extreme detail, though this shot lasted less than a second in the theatrical cut. Matt Stone and Trey Parker know all about straddling the line between the R and NC-17 ratings. 2004's Team America World Police had to be recut a total of nine times before the MPAA granted it an R rating. When the duo behind South Park first conceived their politically charged all-puppet satire, the last thing they probably expected to get pulled up on was the love scene. Parker told the LA Times, It's something we all did as kids with Barbie and Ken dolls. However, the board didn't see it that way, finding much of the marionette action too offensive. Producer Scott Rudin said of the prolonged battle to avoid the NC-17 rating, There's nothing we're asking for that hasn't appeared in other R-rated movies. And our characters are made of wood and have no genitalia. If the puppets did to each other what we show them doing, all they get is splinters. Wes Craven's Scream had to fight with the MPAA to get an R rating. While the director refused to alter the opening scene in which Drew Barrymore's Casey is stalked by the killer, he agreed to remove the shot of her boyfriend's steaming intestines spilling out. There was one scene toward the end that also had to be tweaked, involving two characters, Stu and Billy, stabbing each other repeatedly. Craven told Bloody Disgusting, Almost the entire third act had to be drastically altered. You know, the whole scene in the kitchen with the boys stabbing each other to establish the alibi? All of that. When Craven made Scream 4 in 2011, he was surprised to find the censors in a far more lenient mood. On this film, to my astonishment frankly, there were no cuts demanded. I guess if nothing else, it's a great example of how, as a filmmaker, you just have no idea what the MPAA is going to do. Deadpool pushed the boundaries of the superhero movie further than they'd ever been pushed before, and Deadpool 2 upped the ante when it came to gleeful violence. But just like the first movie, there were some moments that went a little too far and had to be cut. Speaking to CBR, screenwriter Rhett Reese revealed that one of the film's post credit scenes was originally going to involve Deadpool traveling back in time and fulfilling a long-held fantasy that countless people have had over the years. 
Originally, it ended with Deadpool killing baby Hitler. At the very, very end of the credits, we had him going and killing an infant version of Hitler. We decided that was a little too harsh. Not killing Hitler, but killing a baby. The scene was shot and included in a test cut, but audiences didn't react as favorably as the filmmakers originally envisioned. Reese recounted to Uprox, He's got the crib, and he's standing in the German nursery, and he's leaning over the crib to do it, and there was kind of this, oh. And we thought, we don't want to leave the crowd on an oh, so it ended up coming out. I think we both know I don't have what it takes to do this. There are numerous examples of politically incorrect moments in classic Hollywood movies that most certainly wouldn't make it past censors today, like Mickey Rooney's portrayal of a Japanese man in Breakfast at Tiffany's, or Disney's now infamous Reconstruction-era movie Song of the South. Not many of them are as recent as 1985's Back to the Future, but at least director Robert Zemeckis had the good sense to cut a blatantly homophobic scene before the movie hit theaters. The film's plot revolves around teenager Marty McFly traveling back in time and inadvertently becoming his own mother's love interest, so it was always going to be a tightrope walk for Zemeckis. In the end, he got the balance right. I, I don't know what it is, but when I kiss you, it's like I'm kissing my brother. But the deleted scene would have been a huge problem had it remained. In the deleted scene, Marty tells Emmett Doc Brown that he's feeling a little weird about the situation he's found himself in. The Doc responds by telling him to quote, take a few liberties with her, which is creepy enough as is. But it's Marty's reply that really shocks as he asks Doc, what if I go back to the future and I end up being gay? 1985's The Black Cauldron almost sank Disney completely, with a production budget of $25 million, which had reportedly ballooned to $40 million by the time it was finished, this loose adaptation of Lloyd Alexander's award-winning fantasy series The Chronicles of Pre-Dane was the most expensive animation ever made at the time. With Walt himself no longer around, new CEO Michael Eisner was eager to take the company in a new direction and tap into the Dungeons & Dragon-loving teen market, though he came to regret his decision. When his new team of young animators brought the finished product to Roy Disney, Walt's nephew apparently experienced a quote, oh no feeling. Directors Ted Berman and Richard Rich had gone way too dark for Disney sensibilities. New head of animation Jeffrey Katzenberg cut a whopping 12 minutes from the movie, including a now notorious scene in which the Horned King's undead army kills two henchmen in gruesome fashion. Their skin is melted away, leaving only their skeletons behind. A former bad boy of British cinema, late director Ken Russell pushed his luck with film censors throughout his often controversial career. The English director received an Oscar nomination for his 1969 film Women in Love, but recognition from the Academy didn't make him want to tone his style down. Quite the opposite, in fact. The ending Russell originally had planned for 1971's The Devils became the thing of legend. One scene, the name of which is so controversial we can't even say it on YouTube, wasn't thought to actually exist until a film critic found it gathering dust in a Warner Brothers vault. UK's Channel 4 ended up showing the infamous scene, in which a group of crazed nuns get intimately familiar with the statue of their Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, directly after the Russell documentary Hell on Earth, The Desecration and Resurrection of the Devils. Unsurprisingly, the climatic scene had to be cut from The Devils before censors would approve the film for release, as did a number of other offensive moments. There was originally a scene in which Vanessa Redgrave's sister, Jean, puts a charred human bone somewhere that she really shouldn't, and according to The Guardian, Russell was forced to edit out several other shots to appease US censors. Todd Phillips' Joker has no shortage of extreme and arguably offensive moments, but there was at least one finished scene that was too much for the theatrical cut. Speaking at the Santa Barbara International Film Festival, director Todd Phillips revealed that he would often allow leading man Joaquin Phoenix plenty of room to improvise, which led to some pretty crazy moments. Phillips told Esquire, There were two or three impromptu scenes we shot, one that is amazing in a bathtub, but I don't think we can actually include it in an R-rated movie, and it's not because it was pornographic, it was just insane. Phillips didn't explain why the axed bathroom scene would have rubbed censors the wrong way, leaving fans to guess just what he filmed that day. One scene that did make the final cut saw Arthur Fleck giving his frail mother a bath. Could this scene have originally been longer? Or was Phillips talking about a different bathtub scene altogether? Sadly, we'll probably never find out, as Phillips told Collider, I hate deleted scenes. They're deleted for a reason. The movie that exists is exactly the movie I want it to be, and I will never show a deleted scene. 
Disney Plus users are met with a warning about, quote, outdated cultural depictions when they select some of the studio's older animated offerings, Fantasia included. Released in 1940, Disney's third feature film consists of eight individual segments, one of which was considered controversial from the beginning. The female centaurs in the fifth segment, the Pastoral Symphony, were originally drawn bare-breasted, but the nudity ultimately fell outside of motion picture production code guidelines, meaning they had to be redrawn. The centaurs' breasts were covered up, but remarkably, nobody saw a problem with the racist, insensitive depictions of black centaurs in the Greek mythology-inspired segment. In the original version, the Pastoral Symphony featured two dark-skinned female centaurs named Otika and Sunflower, both of whom serve light-skinned characters. Otika rolls the red carpet out for Bacchus, the god of wine, while Sunflower is shown polishing the hooves of a white female centaur. The studio started editing the characters out of the film in 1969. Disney editor John Carnikin, who removed many of these shots for the 1991 VHS release, told Entertainment Weekly, it's sort of appalling to me that these stereotypes were ever put in. In the year 2000, Disney released a so-called uncut version of Fantasia to mark the film's 60th anniversary, keeping Otika and Sunflower out of sight with subtle pans and zooms. Check out one of our newest videos right here. Plus, even more Looper videos about your favorite movie moments are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.